Welcome everybody to the first ever episode of Dave's Afterthoughts. I was actually s- kind of like playing with the idea that I was going to call it Dave's in real time reviews, uh, but I just thought that that was a big mouthful to say. So I started thinking about it. Well, what is this um, this new show uh, consist of? Well. It's going to consist of uh, the different places that I go to throughout the year, like shows or concerts or or special screenings or whatever the case may be. And I give you guys my review of my experience for um, whatever it was, whether it be, like I said, a show, whatever the case. Um, so I was going to call it Dave's in real, t- in real time reviews like at the time you know but then I started thinking about it you know what's not at that moment that I'm giving you the review I'm actually giving you the review after I come back so I thought it would be better if I call it Dave's afterthoughts so um today is uh March wait was it uh I think it's March 8th March 8th yes um and uh like two weeks ago a friend of mine um a special connection um i'll just let you guys know hashtag ronnie and markel make a podcast if you guys are interested in listening to um pop culture of all different types they just actually moved on to um youtube media so um you can catch them on there uh but yeah ronnie and markel make a podcast has they have a huge following um in the thousands and um they've been doing um shows uh, on on podcasts there you can find them on spotify you can find them on soundcloud you can find them all over the place just look up ronnie and michael make a podcast online and you'll definitely find their podcast and they talk about all the stuff coming up um when it comes to um pop culture or movies or comic books and all that stuff if you are a geek and you are interested in learning more about our geekdom then definitely listen to them um i'm you know doing a little plug for them because because of them i kind of like got myself started on this and um you know little by little i'm learning more and more as i go along and i'm trying to you know probably get to that level you know whatever the case may be i have have Dave's uh, Dave's Corner, which deals with my you know my nerd dumb. I talk about uh, upcoming movies, news when it comes to movies, um, um, games, comic books, all that stuff. Uh, it's called Dave's Corner, and anything that pops up that's on the media. I have another one called uh, Dave's Book Report, which is about books that I read at the moment, and I give you guys my review on the book or um, on the upcoming movie that deals with the book or whatever the case may be, which at the moment I'm still kind of like fighting to finish off this one book. Um, I already gave you guys my review on the movie, which wasn't as good as the book, but the book is very profound, but I don't want to get into that. This is called Dave's Afterthoughts. Um... And I decided to make this my first uh, one, which was uh, today, March um, 8th. I, 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 my friend sent me um, a GoFobo. Um, um, if you guys know anything about GoFobo, they deal with a lot of screenings, um, movies that are coming out. And if you get in time, if you fill out the, uh, the app in time and everything, they'll send you a, screen, uh, uh, a ticket for a specific movie. And it's absolutely free. You just have to get there by a certain time. And, um, you know, you have to wait. You know, pretty much if you're going to you're gonna get the movie for free, you're going to wait <laughs> until the movie starts. So to date, that's all I've ever done. Um, I've gone to Aquaman and uh, ahead of time. And I, you know, you know, I, I, well, that one I actually got, I had to pay. No, actually, I paid for Bumblebee. Um, Aquaman, I got a free ticket, and I was able to go, um, which wasn't a, and it wasn't, it was just a movie. I went to go see a Bumblebee. I actually paid ahead of time. I went to go see it like a month in advance. Um, what else? Uh, I went to go see Fighting with My Family, the the WWE Page movie ahead of time. I went to go see Shazam ahead of time. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch um, the Alita Battle Angel one in time because like, we got there really late. Uh, so we missed our opportunity. Um, and the one before this, it was uh, Bad Boys for Life, which was another one that I got there a little tardy and... We missed out the opportunity. I mean, I still went to go see a movie because I have the AMC A-list. Shameless plug. I went to go see the AMC A-list, but um, I wasn't able to see uh, Bad Boys for Life in, in advance, which was okay because I ended up with I, I went to go see it the movie the next day. 
uh, when it did come out. Um, so today, my uh, two weeks ago, my friend sent me this, uh, the GoFobo screening app, and it was for A Quiet Place Part 2. Um, so I filled it out and um, got my, I did not read the fine print at the side, so I got my ticket and I was ready, I planned it out. Um, Sunday come, I'm going to go there early, I'm going to wait on the line, blah, blah, blah. So I shot out this, I got up, or you know, not early, I got up semi, I left around 2-ish. Um, no, actually, I left my house around 2-ish, got on the train at 3.09, um, got to New York like around 4-ish. I walked up the street, I still, you know, supposedly they were going to start letting people in at 5.30. So I walked up the street and I saw, as soon as I got there, I saw there was a line. It was a promo line. It was not big, but it wasn't small. So I got all the way at the end of the line and I stood there at 4.30. I think it was 4.30, 4.45. I don't know, whatever the case. <clears throat> and I waited. I had nobody to talk to. So I watched the videos on my phone as much as I could. Um, I listened to music, but I was afraid that my battery was going to die and my battery pack wasn't fully charged. So I was kind of nervous that I was going to overuse my thing. So 4.30 uh, turned to 5.30, turned to 6.30. Um, and I'm like, when are they going to let us in? Oh my goodness, it's 5.30. They should have let us in by now. 6.30. I, I saw people talking to each other and it was just, they were having their own conversations. I was literally quiet. This is the longest that I've ever been quiet in my life. So um, I'm standing there, standing there at 6.30 came, uh, it was close to 7, that's when I started seeing a lot of black, like, uh, I guess there were escalades or whatever, all arriving, and then I start hearing people saying, oh, that's him, that's him, and I'm like, that's who? And then all of a sudden, oh, the director of the movie, I was like, wait, what? I told him, I was like, wait, I thought, we, what, is this one of those movies? And then the guy came and looked at me, and he says... This is the world premiere. And I was like, what? Oh my God, there's gonna be celebrities in this freaking movie. Like they're gonna be watching this movie with us. I was blown away. I've never been part of any of that. So I'm sitting there. I mean, actually I'm standing there in the freaking cold, freezing my nuts off. And I see the back of John Krasinski and he walks into the building. And I'm like, oh snap, that's so freaking awesome. All of a sudden, I'm looking to the side and I see a, I see some people running across the street to the other side of the building. And as I look, I see Jemon Honsu. I, 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 I used to think it was Dijman Honsu. Uh, he, he was in Constantine. He's been in Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain Marvel, Amistad. He was in a crap load of movies. I saw him walk in and I was like, oh my gosh, I just saw Jamal Hussoun. And the funny thing is that I had just looked up the cast for um, Quiet Place 2 and I saw that he was in the movie. So when I saw him walk in, I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. So I kind of, just, I, I, start, I started becoming a geek. I started geeking out and a couple of people on the line started geeking out with me. So we were talking, you know, about the movie and all this other stuff and just, you know, going crazy about this film. <clears throat> so um we're there chilling and everything then finally they started uh, after i guess all the celebrities started walking in or they already had gone in they let us they started letting us in group by group so i'm over here talking to this random um girl that i met on the line and we're just you know sharing um um you know movie news and all this other stuff talking about john krasinski talking about um um a quiet place and blah 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 and all this other stuff finally we get in they start patting us down in the in the metal detectors and all that other stuff um then they finally let us in i mean they, well before that they gave us a ticket which um it's awesome i'll post uh uh videos and stuff on here so you guys can see the little things that i saw and all that stuff um, so uh, they put us, they all like herd us into an elevator and we start going up. And as soon as we get to the top, to the floor, they're going to show this movie. They start leading us out. They start checking our tickets and then they start telling us where we're going to go sit. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't have any food inside this. So there was no concessions then, but they did have a row of bottles of water all for us. So I grabbed one bottle. We all grabbed one bottle and then we went inside. We were in the mezzanine seating and as you're sitting 
getting up there, you look under and then you start seeing all the celebrities that came to go see this movie. Um, unfortunately, I didn't see anybody who was like big top. I did see the young girl, Millicent uh, Simmons from um, uh, A Quiet Place, uh, who's in the movie. She sat there and she, and she I, she's actually really deaf. I saw her doing sign language and all that stuff. As a matter of fact, I saw a lot of people in there doing sign language. So I guess the crew and um, all the people who did this movie, they were, a lot of them were deaf. So we're sitting there, you know, never ending waiting period uh finally this guy came who works there and i started asking him all these questions how long has he worked there um yeah i'm getting into the nitty gritty with him because i don't know anybody and, and I'm, I'm just telling him what other um things he's actually watched there like other premieres he told me that there was a movie uh just mercy that he went to go see and uh, that that he saw there and then bombshell that they premiered there so there were celebrities there like Charlize theron went over there uh, Michael B. Jordan went over there so I'm like oh my god this is so crazy so I'm sitting there all of a sudden after a long period of waiting um, finally you know they give us one last bit of rules telling us that we can't take out our phones and that we can you know all this other crap Finally, the lights dim down and a big spotlight pops up and John Krasinski walks out and everybody starts clapping and it was just freaking awesome too. I finally, I, I'm, I'm seeing this dude, I recorded a video, I posted up here and he was just, you know, talking about his movie and all that stuff, but I guess he needed to get back to his cast party because I, um, before the move, before the, the, the stars or before they showed the movie, a lot of the stars were already like, you know, walking the runway, I guess, or, or, or the car, red carpet or whatever um and they were taking pictures for this movie um Cillian Murphy was there um obviously Jamon ja, Jamon Honsu um I even saw Jesenia Vice and her uh and her boyfriend or her girlfriend or whatever the case she is um and I just saw a whole bunch of people and um finally the movie starts after John Krasinski finished uh, talking and the movie started and the movie is just like from the beginning to the end is just constant tension, constant um, uh, uh, suspense. You don't know what's going on. And then um, something that the first one didn't have, they had in this one. Like everybody was split up in like different storylines. You know, you got Emily Blunt over here. You got her daughter over here with Cillian Murphy. You got her son over here. And there's like things going on and all and and john krasinski was able to do manage all the three stories in such a wonderful way it was just like he would give you a piece of this and then all of a sudden he gave you a piece of this and a piece of this and it wasn't that they were all going in sync but there was just enough to keep you at the edge of your seat you're you're wondering what's going over here and you're wondering what's going over there and what's going over here and, and, and it pieces all up in such a beautiful way um it was, it was, it was, I, I can actually say it was phenomenal. I don't think we got an ending to this. I think that they left it open on purpose. I don't think John Krasinski is coming back to direct the third one, but um, I think he left it on purpose. I think he left it open on purpose so somebody can pick it up and continue with the story. Um, <clears throat> but um, it, uh, to tell you the truth, the movie is definitely, definitely, this movie is going to be a blockbuster hit. The way it starts, it's just, you know, we finally get an answer to what those creatures are. Um, and uh, but we don't get an, uh, an answer of why they're here or what brought them here. So, um, but we get a, some kind of a synopsis of or an idea of what or where they came from. Um, oh, by the way, I didn't even say where I went to go see this movie. It was in New York. Um, it was uh, at by it was at ten Columbus Circle, um, and it was at the Jazz at Lincoln Center building. Um, if you know where that is, it's right off of, of the Columbus Circle. So, um, yeah, so the movie was phenomenal. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, John Krasinski even said to himself that he enjoyed the first one so much that he wasn't going to do a sequel, but then he was talked into it and he said that this one actually became his favorite out of the two. Um, <clears throat> so the movie ends and everybody's clapping and the movie just ends abruptly and you're just like, okay, I guess we didn't get an ending. So they're leaving it open for a part three. Afterwards, we're walking out and I remember my friend telling me, if you hurry up quickly, you might 
run into some celebrities outside and you might be able to take a snapshot or a picture or something or talk to them or whatever the case so obviously i walked out and then i was like you know what let me wait let me wait so i stayed at the front door where i saw this other guy he had like this handheld camera type thing waiting out there so i'm over here like thinking i'm like wait we're coming out through the front door there's no way a celebrity is going to come out through the front door, especially if they were going in through the back door when I saw them last. So I was like, you know what, let me go check this other side. So I started walking toward the back and I see this group of, of like celebrities or as they call them, um, graphers, people who aren't freaking um, um, fond or, or fans of these celebrities they're just there to get stuff signed from them and then sell them on ebay and they're called graphers these buttholes who don't really care they're just trying to make a quick buck off something so um i get there and i'm just standing there and everything just you know hoping to see if i see anybody but i start seeing all the all the, the escalades are the black escalades are moving toward the door so i'm assuming i'm okay somebody's definitely gonna come out through here so I'm getting my camera ready just in case if I see anybody. And then all of a sudden, as I'm playing with my camera, I hear, Jamal, 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 Hussan, please sign this, please sign. Everybody's like begging him. So I was like literally right next to him. I'm taking pictures. And then I took pictures of me uh, um, doing like a selfie with him and all this other stuff. And it was it was really awesome to be able to be, not that I'm, I'm, I'm all starstruck, but to be in the presence of somebody who who is uh, top notch, I guess. Um, so he um, he signed a few autographs and um, and you know did what he could and then he just they, they, I guess they needed to get to the after party and um, he jumped in the, on the on the on the on the escalator and left. Um, so I was like super psyched that I was able to take pictures and stuff like that. And then I was like, gee, I wonder who else is going to come out here. You know, I'm over here thinking John Krasinski, all that stuff. And then, um, I start seeing that the guys, uh, the security is like at the door and they're over here, like getting all amped up and all that stuff. So I'm figuring somebody's coming out now. So I grab my camera, I'm getting ready to put my camera up. And then all of a sudden, as I'm looking down and I go up, they're like, oh, I hear somebody say, oh, Cillian, Cillian, come over here. But Cillian Murphy was in a rush, I guess. Um, I never hold nothing against these guys. I know that they have busy lives, you know, and all that stuff. They have to get from one place to another. So I was literally just able to get a quick video of him running into his car, Cillian Murphy. But it was still awesome to be able to be in the presence of, of somebody who's worked with a lot of people who or done movies that's been up there, you know, like The Dark Knight and and um, um, um Tron Legacy and stuff like that. Kind of like the same thing with uh Jamal Hussain. He was um Jamal Hussain he was in um, Captain Marvel. He was in Guardians of the Galaxy. He was in Shazam. And he's been in a lot of other great movies. So <clears throat> as soon as uh, as soon as they that you know they left, um, I was so we were gonna wait for John Krasinski, but then the guys, um, they was really nice over there at the Jazz Center. They literally built a little a little area for us to just stand there and wait, and and they treated us with respect. They didn't shoo us off or treat us like crap. I know that a lot of a lot of uh, paparazzi get treated like crap and stuff like that. Um, they told us you know um, they 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 say goodbye. To some of the guys in there and they said you know like uh john krasinski looks like he's going to be staying here or some crap like that or maybe he had left already to the cast party they were um they were going they, like they had buses and a lot of people were going to go to this cast party or whatever the case may be um well i was obviously i couldn't go because i'm not a part of the press maybe one day i'll be able to go over there and be able to experience what it is to walk around with the the knitting gritty of hollywood but um, till now, I stick with doing these videos and um, hopefully I get likes and maybe grow, blow up one of these days. But um, yeah, that's my whole review on Jazz at the Lincoln Center. It was an amazing experience, you know. Yeah, at the beginning, it, it kind of sucked, you know. GoFobo had us waiting outside for an extremely amount, a long amount of time. But I guess if you're with somebody and you're able to like chit chat away and all that stuff, the time goes by faster. Like, I mean, the last time when I went to go see Shazam, um, I was with a friend and 
we kill time just talking you know we use the bathrooms we were able to um you know leave one person in line while we went to go use the bathroom or get food and stuff like that um and we were able to watch the movie and and boom uh this time i really couldn't leave the line or nothing like that. that's why i tried my hardest not to eat anything heavy or nothing like that because i did not want to leave to use the bathroom or anything i miss out my opportunity of watching this movie especially when i found out that there were celebrities in there so go figure um but yeah that's pretty much it um um this uh, the movie i will be doing a further review on the movie um in dave's corner which i am slowly putting together but for now i just wanted to actually make my first my debut of dave's afterthoughts that deals with my thoughts on places that I visit and all that stuff. There is so much content that I have, um, um, you know, waiting to be shot for this, um, this particular um, segment. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more. If you like this video, um, hit the like button, follow me, leave me a message, let me know what you think. I love the feedback because if I don't get this feedback, I don't know what else to change. I don't know how to put things and all that stuff. Like this whole setup right here, I'm trying to do my videos in all different areas. Like Dave's Corner is with, you know, obviously all the Marvel and comic stuff behind me and all that stuff. Um, uh, Dave's Book Report, I try to do it behind a book a bookshelf. You know, I try to like put something out there. And then this, I'm trying this place here to, you know, Dave's Afterthoughts kind of like put it on all the shows that I've been to in New York and all that stuff maybe I'll one of these days I'll have a blue screen and be able to do all that beautiful stuff but till then this is what I got to work with this is me the natural me um, and just let me know what you think okay this has been Dave D Saint in Dave's afterthoughts check you later